everyone welcome to the second episode of be the hacker series in this episode we are going to discuss the basic missions 2 and 3 of hack the site where we would see how files left open to the public would lead to sensitive information disclosure quickly i would like to thank the viewers for giving a great feedback and these are some of the points that i and that i have summarized over that one of the points main points being that i should decrease my screen time and hence i you would see that the screen cast there would be the screen cast and i would be doing a voice over instead of the insert part as it was being done that would also help in the jump cuts because there had been a lot of jump cuts which which it decreased the fluency and you could understand that it wasn't as fluent as it should have been so yeah the video and since the video quality was low it's very difficult to watch just before moving on to the missions i would like to briefly mention that we have a telegram channel hacking simplified 42 you would see the qr code just after this so please join that i daily post around 3 to 4 articles collected from around the world about security and bug bounty in general some security news and all those kind of stuff so if you are not following me at a lot of platforms like twitter or anywhere else or if you don't have follow a lot of people you could easily get the information or recent news and articles on that channel or you could go to my twitter profile and see there is a list i have made i could follow a lot of people that would just bombard your twitter but yeah that's it that's how it is i get i get a lot of articles from there and other places and all those so that's it uh, let's move on with the missions so let's start with this i'm going to log in again let's move on to with basic missions basic missions 2 so it says it requires common sense and it's a uh, more difficult than the previous one let's check this out so this time network security sam set up a password protection script so the this time the real password is being loaded from an unencrypted text file and then compared it to the password the user enters however he neglected to upload the password file So since he neglected to upload the password file, so probably there is no password file there to compare with, right? And since that's the case, I think uh, if even if there is a blank password, I mean if there is a blank password, then also it should work fine, I guess. Let me try some random password first. Okay, so since. it was it had been compared with a empty password file it didn't show so let's do an empty password now probably it should work fine now so directly submitting this should work yep so moving on to the next challenge this time network security sam so this time he remember to upload the password file but there were deeper problems than that so and let's check the mission description what it says so it says that requirement says basic html knowledge and some intuition is needed to find the location of the hidden password file so in the previous one there wasn't any password file but in this time there is a password file and we need to have some basic html knowledge to figure that out let's see so as usual we will try to check the source of the mission we check for the password again so since it's a bit difficult to find it in the source so we would do an uh, inspect element so as to directly get to the source so there are two input types and one is hidden and the other is password so the password one is so this is the post method usually whenever sensitive data is involved it is sent to the post method so the second input type is hidden which has a value of password.php input type is password if you change it to text then you could see in clear text whatever password is there so let's check this input type equal to hidden what it means So it defines a hidden input, uh, hidden field. It allows web developer to include data that should cannot be seen or modified by the users. Usually, when a form is being submitted. So 
So it's data that's not to be asked by the end user, but the application has to figure it out themselves. So if you type input type is hidden, it won't be displayed in the form itself as the password field is being displayed. So let's check this password.php value if it could leak. And it shows something similar to password. Let's check this out. So if you go to the network tab and enable preserve login and disable cache and then enter the password. So what I want to show here is how you could check the parameters that was being sent in the form. So it should have the file parameter and the password. And file was automatically filled by the form itself because it had a value equal to password.php. So what basically happened here was that password.php being a sensitive file was exposed to the end user, which shouldn't have been the case. Uh, the network engineer, uh, Sam should have kept it hidden somewhere else. Or sh it should not have been echoing the password. Like if you access it, it should not have displayed the password. The other way he could have protected it was if he would have stored a hash of the password instead of the actual password and then compared the hash with the password the user enters. So that would have added a layer of security, but I still won't recommend that. The best method would have been if it would have been stored in a secret place and wouldn't have been accessible by the end user. Probably in a database or so. That's the usual practice. Let's move on with the bug bounty part and real hacks based on these sensitive file information disclosure. So resuming with the bug bounty part. So this is a PHP info page disclosure on day.dk. So what happened was there was a page that, that usually displays the information about the PHP version, exact OS version, and a lot of other stuff, including the environment variables. So this page was publicly exposed. It's, it's displayed because the PHP info is a debug functionality, which is like, which if you are running on the PHP server, so it would give all these information and a lot other things ex apart from this also. So if you see the attached Jvn JPG, so you could see that uh, all this information was being displayed. So this researcher got $60 paid for this. It was on Boost AA Fashion AB. So in this, there isn't a lot of sensitive information, but what happens is usually people or developers or it's a general practice that you keep secret or password in not in your source code, whereas in your server environment variables, and since the environment variables were getting leaked due to the PHP info page with the PHP info debug functionality. So it's quite obvious that there could be API keys or secret or anything sensitive that was being stored would have been displayed if a malicious attacker would have gone to this page or if anyone else also would have gone to this page. So that's for this. So second, the second report is about the dot ds underscore store files so this is the article where the tech lead of for mac os finder at apple in 1999 so he explains what what are ds store files basically they are desktop service files and then later on he ex tells us that there's unfortunately these files are created pretty much every time you visit like whenever you visit a folder this is created which which was not the actual intention of this so coming back to the report, so uh, what's the like, what's the vulnerability here talking about that? So DH store file basically stores all the information about the metadata of the file, the like the files in the folder and a lot of other things. So if suppose this file gets leaked to the attacker and like if you go to this website and then you type dot DS underscore store and you get that file. So it pretty much guarantees that all the, like this, this file, if it's there, so it would contain the information about all the other files stored in this directory, whatever the path being here. So as we saw it here in this, in this attack, in this third mission, in the fourth mission, sorry, that the password.php was in the hidden input. So we got to know that there was a password.php file. And then we went to that website. So it gave us the password in plain text. 
so uh, that that was one way of to get the file stored on the server the other way is to get like to brute force and then there is this way where you like if you get the access to the dot ds store file so that's how you like know what other files are available on the server the, the so only in, there's not only the dot ds store file there are a lot of other files like earlier these people the internet watch.org they had done the analysis of dot get folders on the alexa top 1 million website so alexa is a like a service that gives a analysis of the websites like top alexa mm, web and analy- analytics so if i do this so it so it gives a traffic analysis and a lot of other stuff about the a lot of websites so like uh alexa so you could easily download the list of alexa top 1 it's freely available websites so top sites uh you could download and then you could do you could do whatever like analysis you want to do and a lot of other stuff so it gives daily time daily php is present a lot it's a good website it, it gives a lot of these things you could download it from there so what they did was they downloaded the file and then after they got top 1 million website they ran this script or whatever tool they made and then they got the ds store files so uh, finding files and folders which contain sensitive information so all of these come into the category of reconnaissance like if a git folder is like suppose uh, if we go on to the public uh, the previous research so they did an analysis of dot git folder so if they if you get a publicly accessible git folder it pretty much guarantees that they, it would have the source code and even the previous iteration of the source code so suppose if i made a change today in the code and i remove the hard coded password so but git guarantees that the password would be there because it shows all those things so that would become a major issue if you go on with this as they show the analysis what they did and a lot of files that they found another research based on that itself so it was on twitter they, this researcher got a ds store file on some twitter domain subdomain so it he was he or she was awarded for $560 for that so yeah and this this bug and, and there's a related blog post of this about from patrick fren fren batch sorry if i pronounce that wrong So if we look at this, so so this so this was in twenty fourteen. I I think I read it in like years two years back or somewhat. I don't remember the exact time. But if we look, so it was uh, the PHP info page was being leaked on Yahoo dot com, and it uh, since Yahoo is a big big website, so it was quite a big thing for them. and so what he did was what it was quite interesting where he found the public net range of yahoo and it was a he also got the cid range cid is classless inter domain routing so it's basically a short hand notation of like getting and all these things so he found that and then he made a small bash script where if i zoom this here in this part so what he does is he runs a loop on the on the wget command wget command basically does is it gets the it does a request to the web server so if i show you the man page of wget wget so it's a non interactive network downloader so if if i do like uh, wget uh, https google.com so what it would do is it would do a curl request to google.com and it would save it here so if i do cat index.html so it would show me all that so what he did was he did the same for php info page on the whole domain on the whole sorry subnet of yahoo this is which is this one and then he found on one of that one of them there was this php info.php file being leaked so i think it would have taken pretty long time because it was 260000 unique ip addresses so based on his research this researcher also did the same thing he took he found a new like cid range i think and then he also he got a different domain subdomain of yahoo.com which had php info.php page being leaked so he further says that it it took around 2.5 days to execute all the to scan all the 65000 25 ips 
and it did it non stop on a data ocean server i myself use a data ocean server to the uh, to do these things because you cannot like be sure about your laptop being kept on for continuously for 2 to 2 and a half days and it's easy because you, you would also be doing other things on your own laptop so it's better like if you get a small uh, droplet on the servers are called droplet on data ocean so that costs very little like 5 dollars or 10 dollars Uh, for a month based on your usage you could also stop you could it's charged early so that's that uh okay so i think that's pretty much everything covered for today thank you hope you enjoyed it so i hope that was worth your time and you enjoyed it as much as i have enjoyed making it i have tried improving i think you would have noticed there has been some improvement i suppose Uh, mention in the comments if you could see any improvements and uh, do also mention what other feedbacks whatever you have you could use the feedback link after this thing after video ends after this part of the video ends you yeah, do also make sure that you join the telegram channel so as to get the articles delivered to you i daily post around 3 to 4 articles so that's all after this video after this part of the video you would see your key takeaway screen and then the telegram link thank you have a nice day